Thank you all for coming. It's wonderful to see so many friendly faces in this crowd and uh, on such a beautiful day. And I'm so honored to be part of this show and certainly to have been chosen for first prize with this in what is a series of unconventional women that I'm working on and have been for probably three years. And um, she is called I Am So Much More. And this, some of my pieces come from my head, most of them do, and some are inspired by photographs. And she was inspired by a photograph that was actually an ad in the New York Times Magazine section for a, a hospital and a, a fundraising thing for a hospital. And it was, this person is 16 years old. I've aged her in the painting, but she was 16 and she's just standing there in, ta in a tattered blue dress with her hands like this, and it just grabbed me. And this is someone who lives in abject poverty in an African village, and I wanted to make her a queen. I wanted to elevate her. I wanted to take her struggle, and I wanted to talk about making that struggle a dance, perhaps. And so I just drew in a very faint outline. I, that's how I work. I am not, I work very, very much not like Cindy. I, I don't know where I'm going. I, her dress was just blank. It was a blank space and I worked my way down. So I started with leaves and I felt that I just wanted to have nature coming in and out of her and that she was so much more than her circumstance. So. I started with leaves and then I went down and I thought, ah, beetles. And then I went down and I thought, oh, birds. And then I wanted to play with that in and out part because I, I feel so strongly that we're, well, it's a fact that we're all just a, a membrane away from our surroundings. That the, the space between our skin and, and what's not our skin is just a well, tiny, tiny jot. So, that is what I wanted to bring out here too. And the idea of cliche as it may be that we are, we are star stuff, as Carl Sagan would say, for those of us old enough to remember Carl Sagan. And so that's what I did. And then I thought, oh, I want to put a crown on her. So there was, things just, things went down and then things went up too. So um, the indigo sky and the stars, and there was, like Cindy, paint removal. So. For me, it's wetting my finger and removing the paint um, with taking a wet paint brush on the very saturated indigo and removing it in dots to make the stars, things like that. So I love color, and I love being fearless with color, and I love my women. They, as they grow, they start talking to me and telling me what they want, and so in, I'm not sure how to move over here, but um, so I have another in the series is um, I've kind of, um, as, as, as the political climate has uh, changed, I've, so this is, this is called um, Warrior, and um, it's another one of my series of unconventional women, and I love to dress my women, and <laughs> <laughs> so... No nudes here, and so it's just all, it's, they're clothed and they're weaponized here, so that's how I was feeling when I was painting her. She, she came before this, this woman, and um, so what I do is I am, I'm grabbing from fiber books with patterns. I'm doing less of that now. I'm doing much more invention. Um, but, but a lot of these are patterns from books of William Morris or ethnic costume patterns that I'll that just re, um, reinvent with color for my own palette, my own need. And then I just invent. So that's the fun part. And also the terror is there pretty much constantly. Once I get the face in, I kind of relax a little bit. So a lot of times I'll start with the face because that's just absolutely terrifying. If the face isn't working, the painting's just not going to work. So um, to that end, I have, um, I have a work in pro progress now, which is just at the very, very, very beginning. So her face is in. So her face is in. 
and there's just this, um, and this is from my head. So this woman, it, you can't see the bear. The outline is so bare, and I'm going to prop it. After the talks are over, you can come over and look at it. But it's, um, her dress is going to be completely and utterly floral. I mean, it's going to be um, floral as in, as in nature, wild, everglade, jungle, floral, just growing inside her. And then the whole background is going to be a cityscape, probably a black and white cityscape. So it's the idea of that contrast again. And these women who are not conventionally beautiful, they're not doing conventional things with their lives. They have stories. There's a, kind of a narrative there. You can almost create a backstory for these people uh, that's what I'm hoping anyway, that you become more curious about them. I should stop talking right now and ask for questions. <laughs> yes, uh, Karen. I just am curious because I've seen your progression of women, you know, throughout the, and how do you choose the pose? Does the pose um, reflect anything that's going on with the painting or is it, you know, um, you start. You say you start with the face, but do you have the pose in mind when you? Yeah, the pose has been drawn in. I, I'm into not, nothing's anatomically correct. None of the proportions are correct. I'm not a trained artist. I've never studied art. Mm. Um, so I, I, so this doesn't. Her, her head is tiny. Usually, that nothing is working. That the, the hands aren't right. But to me, it's just a feeling. That it's a feeling that you get when you look at it. And you go, oh. Yeah. And and so that's what I'm going for is that oh not that well her finger is not like yeah. it's not it's not it's just no 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 it's like it's the other thing so I'm going for that other thing so the sometimes I take them I the so the human body cannot possibly do some of the stuff that I have my women doing and that's my long-winded way of saying that I get it from everywhere I've taken things from. I wish I had brought more more of my women with me, but you could see some of the some of the ways that they are posed. And there's also there's also one of the unifying things is joy. So that working from joy is for me a whole new concept, away from the struggling artist, away from the you know, um, it's it's that yes, there's the struggle. Yes, this woman is mighty and she's fighting. She's a fighter. But there's a joy there. Mm -hmm. And um, that women, it's, it's really, I hope it can speak to men too, but for women now, oh my God. You know, I just, it's just for me so compelling. It's, I feel like I'm mining this very rich vein of material. And it's just, it just keeps coming. It's, it just keeps coming. And, and I don't know what's next. So yes, I'm sorry, Lee. Oh, yeah. You said that you didn't have any training in art. So when did you become an artist? When did you realize and accept that you were? And how did you develop this incredible style? Well, when you, oh, thank you. Um, when, well, do you have five hours? <laughs> Let's have coffee. But, uh, well, uh, just very briefly, very briefly, I started out making chameleons because, and this was in 98, I'd, I'd always done art, but I went the academic route. I ended up becoming a book editor, which I did for 38 years. So, and I was writing on my pieces, and I, was, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really doing much art. I was raising children, and I was busy repressing all of my artistic urges. And so then I took this, I read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, hello. Yes. And it just knocked me on my other place. And I went in as a writer and I came out as an artist because one of the assignments that this person gave us during this class, because we decided the only way we were going to get through this book was if we did it as a group, was to make a creativity doll. I'm going way over. Okay. It was to make a creativity doll. And so I was very resentful because I don't make creativity dolls. And so I went and got, um, I got Crayola crayons. Crayola crayons, and I. This is what these dots are. When you come up, you'll see that the dots. This is what I was working with mostly was Crayolas and watercolor. I decided to make a chameleon, and I called it self-portrait. So, um, and it, that was the first piece that sold at the first show that I did, which was at Carol Peck's Good News Cafe in Woodbury, um, which was it was just very meaningful that that went 
because um, it was just so, it was like, so from my heart. And it was like, oh my God, look at use this chameleon. And I'm using Crayolas. And that's what I started with when I was five. And there was, again, the joy and the fear and all of that. And so then I started making women's heads on my chameleons, but leaving the tails and the claws. Then I started making women's hands and the faces. And then I just lost the tail. <laughs> and then it was just straight on women with dresses and other things. And so that's how it just kind of progressed was that way. So, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank I, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much.